10 years since Emma Filipoff went missing in downtown Victoria at age 26. I don't think I will ever lose hope of finding Emma, but 10 years ago, my hope came in a different form. At that time, she thought her daughter would show up in a matter of days. I really believed in those first two weeks that it was just a matter of walking, walking, postering, postering, and I would just find her. Now we all know that's not true, and that's not how it's going to work. The morning of her disappearance, November 28th, 2012, a friend of Emmer's called police because he was concerned. A friend told police she was paranoid and disoriented, but after speaking with the 26-year-old, officers let her go. So investigators believe she's still alive? Uh, certainly, yeah. It seems the police department maintains that belief. Vic PD has released a rendering of how Emma could look at 36. Releasing this drawing will aid us in our continued efforts to investigate and locate Emma and bring her home to her family. It just takes one person to, to see her and, uh, and let us know. Investigators say it's possible she's unhoused or the opposite, living a happy lifestyle somewhere else. I can't rule out the possibility that she's being held against her will. A docuseries with no set release date will explore that and other theories. And Emma has a very special friend with her. Someone clearly has information. Emma did not vanish into thin air. Somebody became involved in her life. And we need to reach that person or those people. I think a coffee might be in order. It's a very strange um, feeling. I have a lot of emotions uh, surrounding the 10-year uh, mark. To be honest, I never thought we would get here. So 10 years, four months is um, astounding, astounding to me. Some days it feels like it's been forever, and some days it feels like it was just yesterday that all of this happened. In the early days, it just never really occurred to me that I wouldn't find Emma. I just felt in my heart that it was just going to be a matter of time, in a short period of time. Even after a year or so, I still felt there should be a, a tremendous amount of hope around the situation and it's not that I've, I've lost hope but I just think that I have to dig deeper. This drawing shows an age progression of Emma from age 26 to age 36. I was startled by Vic Pitti's drawing. I felt that it didn't look like Emma at all. After looking at it for a while and, and looking at it, you know, at different times, I found that I could see glimpses of Emma in it. But um, I guess I have to say I was disappointed. I don't think that it's going to uh, further the search in any way. There's just not enough of a resemblance. I'm sure that they felt that they had to do something beyond uh, just talking about the case in order to mark the 10th anniversary. So I'm glad that they did something. I was happy that they took the initiative to, uh, to mark it in, in, a, in a significant way. I was quite surprised when Hugh Morrison approached me. Having seen the Victoria Police rendering of uh, the age progression, he wanted to see if he could provide a drawing that might resemble Emma a little more closely. I watch a lot of uh, you know, true crime, missing persons, uh, documentaries, so on and so forth. It's, it's obviously it's part of my job, it's what I've always had an interest in. And uh, the case just really sort of stuck in my mind because it, it's such an, an unusual case in the circumstances as to uh, Emma's disappearance. November last year, a post came up about the age progress drawing that had been released to the Canadian media. 
don't mean any disrespect to the police department or the artist at all. I didn't think the drawing was of that great quality and I didn't think it looked like Emma that much. It bothered me. I think I said that in the email when I contacted you both. So I wanted to offer to maybe do something a little bit more accurate. I thought it was very kind. I thought it was very generous of him to offer his expertise and his time. And I was looking forward to seeing yet another age progression, again, hoping to hit upon something that might actually be helpful in the search. Our faces change when we're growing so much between when we're, we're little kids to when we're around about our mid-teens. I wouldn't say there's as many changes in adulthood. You start to notice aging probably more kind of in your 40s up. Um, in your 30s, you will see uh, small changes. It all really depends on the individual. A lot of it's got to do with lifestyle. When you look at pictures of Emma, when she's in her early, mid-twenties, you start to get uh, the little creases called nasolabial creases between your nose and your mouth. The eyelids will get a tiny little bit heavier, you know, a little bit of bags under your eyes. The lines on the forehead as well will appear a bit, bit greater, but I wouldn't say there would be a, a, a massive difference. The person used an app to create an age progression uh, photo. So this is a photo as opposed to a drawing. Um, the person used an actual photograph of Emma, so it's a, it's a duplicate of, of this photograph with, uh, you know, added wrinkles and some lighter, possibly grayer hair. Um, I mean, it looks tremendously like Emma, but I don't think it makes enough of a difference. Although I don't know what I expect from an age progression drawing or an app. I'm just not sure that I have any idea at all what Emma might look like now, 10 years later. When you're creating a composite, you tend to create a neutral expression. Like you wouldn't create the person smiling. Uh, I mean, it, they do look like Emma but they definitely look um, like they're done with a computer. He's altered the skin tone, lightened the hair, and just deepened some of the lines. I would say he just a heck of a lot more. I mean, gee, I'd say she looks 45 to 50. I use actual photographs of the person and I study each one really closely and then I replicate them or I will um, use high resolution images of other people and I'll spend time recreating individual features and overlaying them say overlaying the eyes the nose the mouth then I will add the little the little changes the, the subtle changes like the aging there's a lot more time that goes into it there's a lot more care and detail put in Getting an idea of what her parents looked like around about the same age was a big help because um, obviously when someone's been missing for a long time, like 10 years in Emma's case, we don't know much about their lifestyle. We don't know if they've had a lot of sun exposure, if they're smoking, there's alcohol, drugs, diet, lack of sleep, stress, all these things will uh, have an appearance on our face. Our health predominantly shows um, in our faces. Hugh was very open to suggestions and through a great deal of time and energy on his part, uh, we worked through it, offering different changes to arrive at a final drawing of what we think uh, Emma may look like 10 years later. I think it's as close as we're going to get to a, a good age progression drawing of Emma. I just think that uh, this is a man with a very kind and generous nature, and uh, I don't think I can say enough about the appreciation I feel towards him. I hope Emma is still with us. 
I hope she's well. And I really hope she comes home soon to her mum, as soon as possible. Um, I feel terrible for that family. Um, it's, it's awful. It's, it's really upsetting. It bothers me. I hope that someone who knows where Emma is, where Emma's been, what's happened to her, just contacts the family or contacts the police as soon as possible.